Hi, and welcome to this talk. In this presentation, we will discuss designing an inclusive unit for 1400 first year students. Before we get started, a bit about ourselves. I'm Natasha Bonlam, digital learning producer at London College of Fashion, and I work within the digital learning team. And my name is Sheldon Chow. I am the head of digital learning at London College of Fashion and the Better Lives Unit Leader, which is the unit we will be discussing in this presentation. London College of Fashion is one of six colleges at University of the Arts London. The other colleges are Camberwell College of Arts, Central St. Martins, Chelsea College of Arts, London College of Communication, and Wimbledon College of Arts. At LCF, we believe that fashion means business, shapes lives, makes style, tells stories, and looks forward. Better Lives and the Better Lives Unit is a strand of our values work. Better Lives is a term used to describe our work in driving change in diversity, social responsibility and sustainability in fashion. And we think it's important for our first year students to think about these themes from the beginning of their journey with us and hopefully become change makers in the future. This is a compulsory unit delivered simultaneously to approximately 1400 year one students and consists of 25 projects and 14 lectures that students can select from. In our design, we use two frameworks to carefully consider the elements of the unit, the RAISE pedagogical framework and UAL's digital creative attributes. The RAISE framework is a helpful tool to ensure we consider four elements of online learning, which are resources, activities, support and evaluation. The digital creative attributes framework is UAL's articulation of the digital attributes we think are important for our students to engage with. From these frameworks, when designing for inclusivity, we considered visual design, language and accessibility. We'll give some examples of these elements in the next few slides. In communicating with our students, it's important to consider both visual language as well as written language. We recognize that a proportion of students are visual learners, and as such, it is important to help students navigate materials as well as understand their journey through the unit in a visual way. Before starting any design work, we develop a set of mood boards to sketch out our ideas for what we envisage the visual design to look like. You can see, for example, some initial ideas for the iconography, which we ultimately moved away from. To highlight the themes of diversity, social responsibility, and sustainability, we developed a series of icons to represent these themes. Each icon has its origin in the letter O in the Cooper font, it was important that the icons all started from the same place to show a connectedness of the themes and were abstract icons to indicate the complexity. For example, while we initially brainstormed the use of a leaf and the color green for sustainability, we wanted students to understand the multiple issues with sustainability, such as zero hunger and responsible consumption and production, as stated by the United Nations Sustainability Goals. Here you see the three icons used on the cover pages for the reader. You can see how we use the icons on our Moodle site to signpost each of the different lectures to the themes. These images show our document templates. While visually pleasing, there are also a number of design features for accessibility. Firstly, the minimum font used on the document is 12 point. Next, we only use sans serif fonts. Serif fonts can be difficult for some users to read. Following that, we use a two column format, which also improves readability of the document as reading a wide column can be tricky for some users. Finally, the documents are in a pale background color. Documents that have black text on white can be difficult for some users to read. A big job that we had in the process of developing this unit was taking documents written by 40 plus colleagues and editing it to sound like one coherent voice. As we made our way through all of our documents, we noticed that we were using academic language when we were signposting information. And one principle that we ended up agreeing on is that we would use plain English for instructional language. In this example, one document used the word discern. When we translated discern into Mandarin, Italian and French, based on the languages that we speak in the room, we found that it had multiple meanings. Yet recognize another word for discern made sense within the context of instructional nature of this sentence and translated better. We provided both students and staff with formatted and plain text documents 
and this was to ensure that our documents were as accessible as we could make them. We also captioned and transcribed all of the recorded videos which were then made available via our VLE. Finally, a critical element of our design for inclusivity is connected to our assessment. We asked students to create four blogs as opposed to a formal essay. Our rationale for this was to provide them with the opportunity to submit their reflections in a visual way if they wanted to do so. This has been the least successful element of the unit and one that we continue to work towards and develop further. In conclusion, we considered visual design, language and accessibility when designing this unit to be inclusive. Thank you for watching our presentation.